Well, in order to respect the ones that arrived on time, I think we should start our session. So, first of all, good morning to all. Thank you for joining us on this Clumtex marketplace towards Industry 4.0 opportunities for the textile sector. My name is Maria João Samudio. I'm from Produtec, one of the partners of the five partners of this Clumtex project that also involves CITEV in Portugal, the same as us, AEI Textiles and Ateval in Spain, and EMC2 in France. Uh, uh, first of all, some uh, notes on this uh, uh, session. We, we please ask all attendees to turn off their cameras, not to overload the network uh, connection because the, the presentations are uh, somehow heavy. This session will be recorded, so please, if you don't wish to be identified, edit your details on the platform. Uh, during the session, in each slot, we will have uh, time for Q&A, so please place your uh, questions on the chat, stating the, the speaker to, you, to whom you are address addressing them, please. So, as you know, uh, Uh, this is the fourth session of this virtual marketplace. Uh, it started on January 20th and it will be uh, running up until the 24th of February. This is the fourth session dedicated to robotics in industry. We will have two more sessions. Next week we will have a session on the potential of virtual reality in industry. And we will finalize on the 24th of February with the presentation of financial opportunities to help SMEs on their journey to digital uh, transition. You will find an updated program in our Clantex website. So, uh, as I mentioned before, today's session is dedicated to robots in industry. The um, industrial robots uh, sector has been raising a lot in the, in the past few years. Between 2012 and 2017, the worldwide installed base of operational robots increased an average of 10% each year, and after that year, the percentage is even higher. In some sectors, like automotive, as we know, that represents 30% of the worldwide uh, installed uh, capacity, uh, the most uh, routine works are now highly, highly robotized. But due to recent uh, advent, uh, advances, robots are also now used in handling very much complex operation and sensitive operation that require extreme precision. And uh, to do that, they use, for example, uh, laser vision. <laughs> uh, the textile industry we, which we are addressing here is, however, still uh, having a relatively lower rate of change. It uses robots more in their internal logistics rather than on the process itself, given the specificities and the sensitivity of the product. However, the, this is changing rapidly because uh, the potential and the potential of this sector as it is a very very uh, big sector it, it's huge so it's of, uh, very interesting to all of us uh, so uh, the the need is well identified by the textile companies and it represents an interesting challenge for the innovative advanced manufacturing companies so after this very, very small uh, introduction on the theme, I will briefly present today's schedule. So we will start with an inspiration success story from uh, IDEPA, a Portuguese company. Then at uh, 11, we will have uh, two textiles companies presenting their perspective on future challenges. We will have Liaza, Mr. Jaime Cabré, and we will have ERT, Mr. Miguel Machado. And then it will be time for 
in Trozis and ECOBAT to present their advanced manufacturing solutions on these uh, themes. From 12 to 14, we will, you will have the opportunity to engage on B2B meetings that we believe it's a very interesting feature of this uh, marketplace. So we strongly encourage you to take the advantage of these and to uh, ask other people to meet. We have 170 people uh, enrolled in, in, this, uh, in this feature of B2B in B2Match. So please search the platform. For sure, you will find some interesting companies that can share your ideas and their solutions uh, with you. So without any further delays, we will start today's uh, uh, session. Uh, first of all, we will have IDEPA. This is a Portuguese company specialized in tech and fine textiles. And they, will, they are embracing now their digital transformation trend and have an ongoing uh, pre, uh, project. It's called IDEPA 4.0 Cyber Physical System. Uh, so it's an ongoing uh, process. Uh, the presentation will be uh, made by Miguel Morissad. He is the, manage, the maintenance director that will present the company and the challenges that triggered this digital transformation project. Then Miguel will be supported by Sistrade and Inesctec, two entities that are involved in the process and are, the, and are providing here the more technical uh, background. So uh, I will pass now the floor to uh, Miguel uh, Moura uh, Isa. Miguel, please, the floor is yours. I think uh, the, you can start, uh, Regina, sharing the screen. Good morning, Miguel. We are just uh, waiting for, yes. So, Miguel, we can now see the presentation. We need you to turn off, you please unmute your... Uh, it's okay now? Yes, it's okay. perfect now, okay. thank you. Yes, no. okay. Thank you, Miguel. Oh, hello, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Miguel Moresa. Uh, I'm a maintenance director uh, in IDEPA. I will give you a brief history of IDEPA. Okay, IDEPA is a Portuguese company based in São João de Madeira, in Portugal, with more than 55 years exist. Uh, our sector of activity is fine textile fittings. We are focused on the development of accessories that identify and increase branding value in several activity sectors on the development of new materials and applications. We are always eager to invest in advanced technology, creativity and counseling. Uh, I will give you the, the product families. Uh, so we have uh, in the, we have divided in divisions uh, the branding that we help our customers, brands, be recognized from start to finish to make the brand stand out for itself. So uh, we do oven and printed labels, packaging, uh, drawstrings, badges, and tags, waistbands, and elastic bands. Uh, the promo. IDEP helps to promote your events like conferences, meetings, uh, music concerts, so with uh, neck liners, accessories, uh, bundling hands, packaging, so uh, events uh, article. Automotive division, we, we have printed and woven tags, elastic strands, branded and few elastics, leather and fabric embroideries and badges. Uh, the, the yarns division, we do elastane and rubber cover the yarn for the textile industry, application following our customer needs. Uh, the technical, uh, we, we do buckle ends, elastic bands, cotton bands, 
custom bands, uh, our customers are the military, aerospace industry, marine and emergency forces. Our business model, we are specialized in the tag and fine textile since 1965. We propose to the customers the development of creative solutions to promote brand recognition and in different areas with the best quality, design and service level. Sales are achieved through direct contact with the customer, electronic platforms and business fairs. The, the current IREPA production systems. So we have two independent production processes. We have the Jakar weaving production and the Hatier weaving production. There is a common warehouse for raw materials and finished products common to both production types. The Jakar production has an intermediate raw material stocks. IDEP uses the Sistrade RRP to manage company activities. A great part of the production equipments have automated data acquisition integrated with the RRP. There are also manual data entry stations in the shop floor. So IDEP produces uh, by, by customer's orders and uh, for stock based on demand forecasts. So here we can see a, a plant and a photo of the the warp, the warp and weft section. So it's the, I can explain very quickly. Uh, so the warp is here we do the direct warping, which is a parallel and simultaneous winning of threads with the same density. They are taken off a grill. We can see several bobbins in the photo and the creels as well. So in the right side, we have a plant with the, the division of the sections of IDEPA. We can see the lo geographic locations of the, the section of the project. Okay, for well, the current IREPA production system, Akar production flow is presented uh, in a depicted in the following diagram. We have the, in, the raw material intermediate warehouse that supplies the Jakar weaving. Then the product is is uh, is carried to the cut and bend section, where we we cut and uh, fold and or bend the, the labels. Then the labels are transported for the, the finishing to make rolls, and then again to the cut and bend for packaging. Then to the final product warehouse. This is a photo we can see the cut and bend production. Okay. And we have the the, the picked in the diagram for Hatier. So it's a little bit different. Uh, we also have the intermediate warehouse for raw material, the warp production, okay, where we make the, the warp beams. And the warps are supplied to the Hatier weaving. We can see later on the AGV doing this transport. Then for, from the Hatier weaving, the product goes for finishing and then final product warehouse. So this is the picture of the Hatier weaving section. We can see the needle looms 
that you, we use in Irepa. And also displace the section position in the, our in our plan. The critical business process at Irepa. Uh, we have operation planning and management, production scheduling material supply and purchasing, production execution and control, internal logistics. Some challenges addressed by SPCF optimization, SPCF diagnosis and performance improvement, intelligent manufacturing, simulation of internal logistics, motion control systems and intelligent automation. Okay. Thank you, uh, thank you. So I'm finishing from this part. But as well. Thank you, Miguel. So now uh, Regina Magalhães Correia will make the will follow up on the more technical uh, issues. And then on the Q and A, if you have any questions also to Miguel Morissa, please place them on the chat. Regina, the floor is yours. Regina, can you unmute yourself, please? Okay, now can you hear me? Yes, okay. uh, we can not see you, but we can hear you. Sorry. And now? Yes, yes, Regina. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Uh, well, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we will present uh, IDEP uh, and its technological evolution on digital transformation uh, with implementation of uh, some improvements in uh, their production process. So let's get, uh, let get us to the subject. Uh, first, uh, I would like you to. Um, I do. I'd like you to get to, uh, a little bit to know uh, uh, of Systrack. We are an information system company uh, with know-how in software de development and consulting service from uh, for different activity areas, but uh, mainly on industry companies and their um, production process. Uh, our goal is uh, to offer market the best uh, information system tool and uh, solutions in order to help uh, our customers to improve performance uh, in all the criti critical business process of their uh, of uh, their companies. So a little brief of uh, our history uh, and uh, um, the most milestones in life uh, of this trade since uh, our foundation till now. Um, this shows the, the development of our achievements during our, our time life uh, since we are um, born in Porto, uh, Portugal, and then uh, the, the, the little tasks we have to conquer the, the, the world and uh, we hope uh, uh, a little bit more on the, on the, the future. Uh, this year we are going to make 2021. 20, 21 years and uh, we we are on the adult age i think <laughs> uh, so uh, sister that is that but sister uh, is a, an integrated uh, platform featuring uh, um, several uh, featuring several models uh, that en encompass all the company activities uh, since the financial management to the to the deliverable and uh, the the um, uh, press sales uh, activity. It's a, a web-based platform uh, with a power powerful feature. And uh, as engineer Miguel Moreza said, uh, Irepa used the sister uh, ERP as the product um, management and the productive um, system in, in their in their company. Uh, Systrade and uh, IDEPA, uh, or uh, IDEPA using Systrade. Systrade has been a technological partner uh, of IDEPA since uh, 2005, 
uh, with uh, those those models stocks purchase management sales management management production management and treasury and and like uh, the average c street customer it, it has come up with a significant set of models uh, as part of the c street solution including automation from the beginning of uh, their implementation it's not very uh, awfully um, uh, uh, no, in the our uh, customers uh, that have too much uh, model since the the beginning, and along of uh, the timeline uh, of the partnership, uh, new requirements arise. Um, so then, after um, the stocks and purchase managed in 2011. Uh, they, they, uh, we implement the financial management because until there, they were, they had another, another supplier in the, in this area. Uh, and in 2013, uh, we implement the human resource management and maintenance uh, management. Uh, as I said, along, uh, along the timeline of this partnership, uh, new requirements uh, were raised. So, and the, uh, <clears throat> Sorry. And what uh, what uh, um, uh, we 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 made to to Idepa. Um since new requirements arise, um, raise, uh, which led us and other partners to challenge Idepa to embrace the um, I four dot zero industry four dot zero project in which uh, some of the, the addressed vectors will be discussed in more details in the, the following presentation uh, with um, with uh, another partner in Tech. okay uh, part of the ch challenge addressed to idepa will be presented be be below and focus on um, the um, the development own tools to support the the design of cyber physical production system operation management tools for the, the cyber physical production system, diagnostic tool to, on continuous improvement of the, the systems, uh, information interoperability tools and descriptive and predictive data analysis. Both vertical and horizontal integrations are ensured by an IoT platform which ensures decentralizing communication between the different sorts of, um, of information and decision software within the company from the, the device layer, the, the low down, the down on layer to the top layer, the, the ERP system, the system ERP. Um, and uh, from the other side, implementation of enabling technology, automation and uh, advanced robotic to stimulation the internal logistics so, uh, for more information about us, uh, um, I would like to invite you to visit our website and social network pages. So, uh, just to let you know, we, we now uh, are in more than 20 countries, we have uh, uh, more than 3,000 users and uh, we are, our system, our solutions are, uh, uh, have uh, HME uh, in uh, more than 15 languages. So um, now I will pass the stage to uh, the other partner that uh, um, that uh, was that are uh, that is with us in the, this uh, process of digital transformation of Idepa. Um, I give the stage to Antonio Coyard from Inesc Tech. Thank you. Thank you, Rosina. Thank you. Uh, Good morning, everybody. You. So now I will try to set up my presentation. So it's perfect. Am I sharing my it. screen already? Yes, yes, we can see it. Thank you, Antonio. Okay, so good morning, everybody. So it's a pleasure to be you here to to present some more technical aspects of the project that we developed with uh, IDEPA. Okay, uh, I am Anton Correalves and I'm, I'm a senior researcher at uh, Inesc Tech, that is a, a Portuguese RTO 
and uh, one of the biggest organizations in this field in Portugal. Uh, when we started this project at uh, IDEPA, uh, the first thing that we did it was an uh, analysis to the maturity stage of the, the company. So we realized that uh, uh, that should be uh, made from the uh, stage that the company was at the, the moment. It was in uh, beginning level uh, connectivity and we decided to implement a project that could uh, make company and put the company in a very higher level of the uh, maturity industry 4.0 uh, roadmap so uh, for that it was made an audit and it was decided that uh, interventions should be made in three major fields, resource and technologies, information systems, and uh, reorganization of business uh, process. Uh, in order to achieve that, a global uh, project, a global architecture, was designed and starting to be uh, implemented. Uh, as Regina already told, uh, this uh, intervention considered several components, such as uh, optimization of the operations production, uh, planning and scheduling, uh, mobile uh, robotics for handling materials, uh, smart box and uh, human machine interfaces at the shop floor, uh, failure detections to support predictive maintenance, but also uh, fields like eco-efficiency and sustainability and performance uh, evaluation. My presentation will be focused only on the first two uh, components of this project, uh, optimized production operations planning and schedule and mobile robotics for material uh, ending. Uh, as in other uh, manufacturing companies, the operation planning and orchestration between different process stages is a complex task. Uh, an example of this complexity, uh, if you remember the presentation that Miguel Morissa made at the very beginning, is the connection between the sections of warp and uh, ratier weaving. In warp, there are two warp machines, and in the ratier weaving, there are 65 looms. Each of the loom has six heads that is able to perform the work in parallel, but with some degree of uh, independence. Besides that, as all we know, uh, these resources, machines and uh, people, they are limited uh, in capacity and in some uh, time periods, they uh, are uh, scarcely to uh, answer for uh, customer orders. Okay. Uh, traditional tools uh, used for planning, like ERP, also have limited functionalities to deal with these uh, complex uh, scenarios. So ERP are able to deal with customer orders, to perform uh, MRP, and to generate production orders. But uh, when we think about how to program these uh, manufacturing orders in uh, its uh, resources, it's a much more complex uh, process. So new tools have to be developed just to uh, try to answer two, two major questions. What is possible to manufacture in uh, uh, short period of times and which resources it can be and should be uh, used. So in the frame of this project, the uh, uh, model was developed to help the planning to do these tasks. Uh, this model 
receives the production orders that are generated by the ERP and is able through uh, optimization and uh, simulation to generate uh, programming proposals, let's say proposals to uh, schedule and charge the work in a specific uh, um, machine and equipments in the shop uh, floor. Okay, so this is able to, uh, let's say, complete the full life cycle from the uh, orders from the customers to the uh, dispatching to the shop uh, floor. Uh, in the next steps, I will give uh, a short look and feel of this uh, CMOP tool that was uh, developed. So after uh, logging in, uh, there is an entry point where the functions can be uh, activated. Uh, first, there are some parameterizations that have to be uh, performed. Uh, instruction the systems exactly what are the time frame of the orders that should be considered and the specific functionalities that we want to uh, perform. Uh, this tool, as I told, has two major components, the optimization and the a simulation. The optimization is performed in four steps. The first step just orders the purchase uh, order, uh, sorry, the production orders. Uh, that means we, uh, there are rules to dispatch the orders based on some business rules. Uh, we normally use early due date dispatch rules. The second step, we have to organize the production orders, dividing them from to the machines based on the uh, product specificities and capabilities of the machines, being it warp or weaving. Uh, I told that there are 65 looms in the shop floor, but they are not all the same. Some are able to perform some tasks, others uh, don't. So in this step, it is necessary to divide the orders uh, between the machines that are available in the shop floor. In the third step, it is possible to divide uh, some orders in parts so they can be uh, executed in parallel uh, in order to shorten the delivery times. But they have to be optimized between the number of lot sizes that we decided to perform and the set types that are generated for each order. So as you know, each time that uh, work is uh, set up in the room, there is a setup in the preparation of the uh, machine. And finally, uh, the uh, divided orders and the, the um, optimized orders are allocated to each of the uh, machines. Okay. Uh, this step of optimization uh, considers some uh, business objectives, but is not able to uh, perform with other constraints that only can be addressed in uh, uh, simulation uh, scenarios. So in this application, uh, there is a component that is able to simulate the running of the results of the optimization uh, considering uh, some uh, restraints uh, such as the um, uh, failures of equipment, the availability of the people, the transportation times, the human resources availability, and so on. 
So here we can see a model of that simulation that represents the running of the production systems at uh, IDEP. Uh, as I told, this simulation is performed in the background, so it is not necessary to access to this uh, simulation in uh, uh, 3D as we are uh, seeing here. Uh, we can only uh, use the results of this uh, simulation. Uh, once the uh, optimization and the simulation is performed, we can look to the results and uh, analyze uh, what the systems uh, propose. And uh, if we are, uh, uh, if we agree with the results, we can pass it to the shop floor. Uh, if the planner is not satisfied with the uh, results, and the results can be seen in several ways through uh, this list or through these KPIs, uh, if the planner is not satisfied, he can uh, ask the system to perform a new run modifying some configuration uh, parameters. So, once the uh, production orders are programmed and they are dispatched to the uh, shop floor, uh, the operations start, but it is necessary to move materials from the work department to the uh, ratier uh, living. So, to help on that, an uh, AGV, automatic drive vehicle, was uh, developed to transport the warp wheels that we can see in this photo. And here we can see the drawing of the dimensions of the reels with the warps. Uh, here in the right, uh, there is a picture where it is possible to see the two possible paths. Uh, from uh, the warehouse where the warp wheels are and the destination of the warps in the ratier uh, section. Uh, this AGV that was uh, designed and built specific for uh, IDEPA, here is a schematic of the, the the robot that was divided and the main uh, characteristics is a, a light and low cost vehicle. Uh, and that was one of the requirements for these uh, solutions. Uh, it is uh, and use uh, LIDAR laser uh, systems to help the localization and the navigation. So it is able to recognize uh, walls and upper objects that uh, connected with the navigation algorithm is able to command the AGV through the space uh, in uh, that uh, site. There is also um, another laser in near, near the, the floor to uh, avoid uh, possible collisions uh, with objects or people that could be near around. The robot, the AGV, he runs in a dedicated uh, lane, but that lane can also be used by uh, people. So he has to manage if there is any uh, interference. Uh, the AGV is connected and interconnected with the ERP, but he also has uh, manual systems in cases that that con con um, connection could have a breakdown. So it is possible to put it in manual uh, operation to choose the path that we want to use and the the destination the. the the, the, the destination in the travel. 
Okay. Uh, the interface between the operators and the uh, AGV, because the operations have to give the system feedback if they have already uh, loaded or unloaded the reels, uh, is made through a um, uh, tablet that is embedded in the uh, AGV. Okay, and uh, finalizing my presentation, we can see here the uh, image of the AGV running. Here is in a laboratory. Uh, we can see in the left the, the physical AGV and in the right panel a digital twin of the uh, AGV where we can, we can see the position of the AGV and we can see the objects, uh, the walls and the paths that uh, the laser uh, recognizes, and we can see the uh, strategy, the, the, the trajectory of the um, AGV. Uh, if there is a need to modify uh, the, the path of the robot, it is not necessary to have an uh, hardware uh, intervention. This could be simply made through the software and establish uh, designing uh, a new uh, path. You will be able to uh, adapt. Uh, automatically okay in this picture in this picture the uh, say the, the controller is uh, open so you can see that is a, a, a lean and clean installation very easy to uh, operate and uh, maintain So, with this, I finish my uh, presentation. Uh, there is a link to our uh, website. Uh, if you have interesting, uh, you are interested to see another project that Inesc Tech is uh, involved, please follow uh, the link. And uh, to finalize, I'm going to give the floor back to Mr. Mora Issa, that is giving uh, the final uh, testimony about the impact of the project in the company. Mr. Mora Issa? Hello. Uh, thank you very much. So we, in, as a conclusion, we, our expectations and objectives in the end of the implementation are an improvement of overall equipment efficiency, the OEE of the weaving department, uh, uh, a better or a high reliability of the delivery dates. Uh, we expect also to improve the, the work well done feeling of the IDEPA employees. So. We, we mean with that that the, the sharing the information and the, the indicators with the employees with give an effect of work well done. So people will be happy with the quality of their work. So the, the divulgation of the KPIs is are very important in the shop. We, here in EDEP, we, we believe on, on that. And the, also very important is to reduce the non-conformities and the waste if you we we can produce uh, better without faults we we save the raw material and the, the electrical energy so uh, overall it's the we 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 referring to the efficiency overall efficiency so uh, we believe that uh, when the when everything is running and finishing, we we will get some very noticeable improvements in, in that of the indicators. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, uh, yes, uh, thank you, Miguel. Thank you, Regina. Thank you, uh, Antonio, for your very uh, comprehensive 
an interesting presentation on these EDIPA 4.0 cyber physical production systems. Um, now we have a 10 minutes for Q&A. Uh, I have some questions he here that uh, people were placing privately to the organizers, so uh, maybe I will start with this one to uh, uh, CIS Trade and uh, Inesc Tech, uh, Regina and uh, maybe Regina and um, Antonio Correalves, if you can unmute yourselves. Uh, so the question is, what would be your recommendations or advices for other textile, com textile companies to start going into Industry 4.0? Um, of you can uh, give us some comments on this. Um, me or Antonio? <laughs> uh, the, the question was made to one of you, CIS Trade and Ines Tech. So <laughs> please choose. Okay. From from our experience, uh, this is a, a great a graduated process um, with baby steps or or not. It depends on the maturity of the the company. Uh, as you see on the presentation, uh, IDEPA is uh, our customer since 2005 and um, with more uh, more celerity or less celerity, it depends also on the the, the trajectory of their uh, the, the, our customer's company. But um, we, we, we start with a few models and then we, as the, the requirements has arrived, Step by step, we are going to implement the the, the other ones. Uh, you see, the Edepa, uh, unlike the other customers, since beginning as uh, automation, automation equipment. So in in this case, it's more easier to to follow the the, the next step steps of uh, Industry 4.0. But uh, it, it 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 depends also in the, their organization but uh, it could be a uh, step by step or if the company has um, yet a, mat a maturity uh, uh, another level of maturity it can be uh, more um, more faster the the transition i don't know if antonio has to wants to to add something uh, you, you, you okay. can Okay, so if I'm allowed to reinforce the Regina's uh, intervention, I should say that the first step should be a maturity level evaluation to understand very well where the company is and define very well where the company wants to go and is able to go. And based on that, to define a roadmap to uh, change from as is to to be uh, because as we said there are several dimensions that should be considered they are the information systems of course of course they are very very important but also other technologies that should be uh, considered and uh, modifications and changes in the business uh, process so only consider this multitude of dimensions in our uh, opinion uh, a project could be uh, successful and mainly uh, if i very very well uh, increasing steps do not want to do everything at the same time define well defined steps this is an ongoing process it takes time so establish your uh, roadmap and follow the roadmap and monitor your map and uh, correct your roadmap if necessary thank you Boris. Yes, yes, thank you both for your uh, answers. Now I have uh, here two more questions to IDEPA, to Miguel Moreza. Uh, first, uh, uh, which was the most complex part on, uh, I know we know this is an ongoing <laughs> process, it's not finished, but uh, up to now, 
uh, from the IDEPA uh, user point of view, what was the most complex part internally uh, to, uh, to do uh, and how were you able to uh, solve it? Okay, uh, I think that the more complex or difficult part was to the beginning to explain to everybody involved the complexity and the details of our production. So to to want to, to explain the persons involved what why things why the why that to do that job or uh, why can why couldn't we do in the, that machine and uh, why the details so each machine characteristics so it's difficult sometimes to explain to the persons that are, are not in the textile uh, some details uh, I think it's it's it was the for me the the, the difficult thing uh, to 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 explain all all the team uh, exactly what was the organization the processes and the the, the trajectory of the raw materials so that was for me the more uh, complex the hardware installation and the softwares for me was not an issue for me for IDEPA, but all the give all the information about our our products and and the productions. Okay. Okay. Very very well. So uh, the, the the question was more on. Uh, of course, these processes are never very uh, simple and to translate them into third parties that are not uh, acquainted to the process uh, and the, the specificities, it's uh, a difficulty for you. Very well, so we have only three minutes left and I have here, th this is more a theoretical question uh, that I have here, that is uh, 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 from what we see that at this moment uh, robots in IDEPA are more uh, envisioned for uh, internal log logistics and material transport. Uh, nevertheless, would it be interesting for uh, your uh, process if you could integrate robots within uh, the process if the technology would be uh, available? It's for me? It's for you, Miguel, yes. <laughs> okay, we, we would like very much to integrate the uh, robots in the process. But uh, uh, the, the difficulty level is very high uh, because we, we have a lot of human participation and uh, with, with, with the details uh, characteristics. So, uh, we thought about some uh, smart vision for inspection. We thought about them, uh, the material removing from the loom as well. But um, uh, it's, I think, in my opinion, it's complex. But it's not excluded, of course. It's, it's, it's. It could be the next step. Okay, it could be the for a, a, a next opportunity. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned in our brief introduction in the beginning, uh, it, the specificity of the textile, it, it, it's one of the things that I've been learning with my colleagues from other textile clusters, is that uh, the introduction of robots in the process, in the textile industry, has uh, quite some challenges but we are going there so it will be this is also one of the aims of these uh, sessions to uh, take the opportunity to 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 give uh, the the next step and to uh, have some more information on this so uh, uh, thank you, Miguel. Thank you, Regina. Thank you, Antonio, for your very nice presentation. We are running out of, uh, out of time in uh, this uh, slot.
uh, we will now go on to the, uh, the testimony of uh, some of two more textile companies. We are going to the slot on textile future challenges. We will have two interventions here, one from Liaza and another from ERT. We are starting with uh, Liaza. We will have with us Mr. Jaime Cabré. He is the CEO and Vice President of La Industrial uh, Algodonera, Liaza. And uh, in, in Mr. Jaime Cabré will make us an intervention on the future of robotics in cord production, the Liaza case. So, uh, uh, Jaime, if you please, thank you. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Then, can you see the presentation? Uh, it's not, we are seeing go to meeting. Yet. Okay, I have two screens then. Let me check. Yes, we know. We know normally it's a question. <laughs> okay, it will be easier to put it on the other side. Just a second. Yes, now, now we see the PowerPoint. But if you okay. can make it. Uh, yeah, uh, in this. Yes. Uh, now it's yeah. not in presentation. Okay, mm. just a moment. <laughs> now you can see it? Yes, perfect, perfect. Thank you, Jaime. Okay, thanks to you. Thank you, Maria Joao. Thanks to all to you and all, all the partners from uh, Clantex to organize this cluster management. Okay, and thanks to everybody to assist to my presentation. Hoping that uh, you and all your families are in a good healthy on this difficult moment. Okay, then I will speak about uh, our company. Okay, uh, well, first of all, I'm Jaime Cabré. Okay, I'm the CEO of Liasa and the vice president of the textile group. I'm the fourth generation. Okay, and uh, I will speak about Liasa, La Industria Algodonera, which now is called Liasa, which is easier for everybody. Okay, then who we are. Okay, we are manufacturers of uh, cords, elastic cords, ribbon, and polypropylene yarn. Okay, we are located in La Selva del Camp, which is in Tarragona, in Catalonia, in Spain. And uh, we have an annual turnover of 5 million euros with more than 50 workers. And the 50, more than 50% of our production is exported outside of Spain, reaching five different companies. Okay, here you have uh, the picture of the business. Then, uh, as we are a century company, as we were created in 1918, to speak about the future and the challenges, we have to know about our, uh, about our history. Okay, then, in a few words, I will explain to you about the history of the company. Then, uh, four corporate generations have turned the company into a reference brand in, in uh, uh, cords, elastic cords and ribbons for international manufacturing. The first generation, which you, here you have the picture of the of my grand grandmother, which started the business on before the 19s, okay, but we created the the uh, anonymous society in the 1918, okay. Then on this beginning, we manufacture of knitwear, socks, stocking, and ties, okay, and then we constitute the company on the 1918. In fact, our TBA number is A from uh, Anonymous Society, after we have the number 43, which is the region in Spain, and after is 00432, then is the 432 company created here in the region, and now is the oldest one with which activity. There is no one other activity with a lower uh, number, okay? Then also this is a, this is a, a challenge uh, to continue. And uh, this, then the second generation, which was the industrial diversification. Then here was a uh, the, we started with the braiding and twisting machines. Okay. And uh, gradually we abandoned the production of fabrics to specialize in ropes and cotton wick lighter uh, firecrackers, which you have here. It's in Spanish, okay, that here you can see the product that was a lot a lot used on the agriculture, because also with the wind, more wind, you have more light, no? 
after we have the third generation, okay, with industrial and commercial expansion, then we're beginning of the production of automatic curtain tapes, okay, with needle rooms uh, for uh, the manufacture of this ribbon. And now we are in the fourth generation, okay, which we will call the digitalization, where we have the production automation, automatization and with automatons, okay, which we work. Also, we have the challenge of the digital marketing, the new management softwares, the solutions with added value, and the new websites, the digital for the uh, clients, which we have the B2B and also B2C, which I will explain to you later. Then our production, what we have, what we do, okay, is we manufacture ropes, elastic cords, ribbons, and polypropylene yarns. And also we manufacture of endings as added value solutions, okay? Then, uh, as you can see here in the pictures, okay, our finishes are automatically manufactured by automatism, engineered by ourselves, applying the know-how of all these years of knowledge to our products. The addition endings improves the quality and aesthetics of the products and increases handling speed and reduced cost to our clients. Most outstanding endings, for example, here, as you can see, are the plastic hook, metal hook, film hook, okay? Then our products go to different, uh, to different applications, as here you can see the packaging, where uh, we uh, manufacture the handles, the core handles, for the luxury paper carrier bags, automatic paper carrier bags, cardboard boxes, e-commerce boxes, PVC boxes, metal boxes, okay? All related to luxury brands. Also, we are on the office supplies market, which we manufacture elastics with metal and plastic endings for the folders and for the agendas. Also, we are in, a, in the more technical uh, application as agriculture, okay? We manufacture elastic cores and shock cores and ropes and ribbons for the agriculture use, okay? We manufacture with different yarns, designs and diameter and technical specification and uh, as the elastic cores and with ending with plastic hooks, metal big hooks, carabiner and big hooks, okay? And ball bungee cords. Also, we are in another application, as you can see here, the footwear and clothing, home and decoration, air freshener, outdoor furniture. Then normally in one day, uh, you go around and then you can see one of our products in one day, you know, which is very nice. Also, I wanted to explain to you about the COVID opportunity, okay, which uh, created the, this uh, pandemic. And then we started and we manuf to manufacture elastic cores for face, ma face masks. The face masks before which not manufactured here in Europe were all imported. And now there are companies which are manufacturing here. And then uh, we started to uh, buy new machines and also adapting our machines, okay, to manufacture these elastic, these elastic cords for fa face masks and elastic ribbons for protective face shields. Okay. Also, we are manufacturing and distributing ear savers, okay, as you can see here, the twist twist, okay, the Leiana, and also another kind of adjustment pieces, okay, to uh, adapt the ear savers. Savers, sorry. Then, which our, is our digital situation? Actually, we have a custom production software, which is from the 1990. Uh, okay, and now what we are doing is to uh, update uh, this program for the production side. Uh, is a very difficult. Oh, it, it, our production is uh, we manufacture by orders. Okay, and we it's all personalized. Okay, this 2020 we sell more than uh, 4,500. Uh, references okay and then the production is very very specialized okay and then we still have this uh, software and what what we are doing on the production side is to update this production okay uh, updating the software and including uh, including uh, now the data sheets which before was were this all this information on excels 
okay, and uh, also the costs of the of the products, and now it's all integrated on these systems. Also, we have now we are starting uh, on the nine, on the 2019. We introducing uh, we we start to work on the new new ERP. Okay, with the goal, which the goal is to have all all the organization on this ERP. Then all actually all the accounting and the billing is done already uh, with the system. And now this 2020, we are starting with a new CRM. Okay, to handle all the, all the information of the, of the clients. And uh, also uh, we are developing on the production side, which we have. Uh, an informatic in our in our company, which did, uh, which is uh, dedicating three days per week to develop this software, this personalized software. And for example, now we have uh, this uh, production planning software, okay, which uh, with a Gantt diagram to planify the production orders. Okay, then you have the production orders, and you can put it in all the different machines, as uh, for example, Idepa before explain it also in our side we have different machines we have more than 300 machines and each machines can manufacture different products depending of different characteristics then it's it's uh, really difficult to handle this planification and that's with this with this new software uh, we are we are improving then for 2022 our goal for the, is to have a unique and complete management software which is called we that includes all current softwares, okay, which will be the accounting, the clients, the CRM, the suppliers, SRM, and the production and human resources. And also the 2020, we are starting with the, the digitalization. Um, then uh, right now, okay, we have more than 300 machines. And the digitalization will help us keep life tracking of all the production, which will help us on taking decisions, to know why a machine has stopped working, and to gather more accurate information of what is being produced. Now we have it, and we don't have it on time. Now we manufacture by pieces, but once it's closed one box, then the, the person which is on the machine goes to the software and introduce that it's, it's manufactured and we want is that we have uh, to put a, a PLC, okay, a programmable logic controller in every machine to know exactly which is doing on this moment uh, the every, every, each machine. Um, then the main goal of the digitalization process is to obtain real time and historic data to optimize production and be more competitive. Also, on the, on the digitalization, we have a corporate website, okay, for the B2B business, okay, where here you can find all the different products and help a lot to our clients to understand also the, what, what, which, which solutions we can, we can give them. And also, we are starting with the e-commerce, okay, that uh, we will start uh, also selling products to the consumer. Okay, this is the new B2C channel to sell our courts directly to the client, as well as other accessory, accessories and complements, uh, as for example, shoelaces and other products. The future, okay, the future challenges, which are, as the presentation uh, says, okay, it's the, robotis the robotization of production. Um, our main goal is to improve product handling in order to create new endings and enhance our current performance. Actually, the way as we are putting the endings on the machine is automatic, okay, but it's in a line, okay. And now, what we are want to improve is to uh, handle before the product to make different endings and different applications, okay. To the use of more complex robots will have us to create new ways of applying those endings. And also we are in textiles, then we are a textile company, but as you can see, we are a textile company, but also we make injection, the plastics, okay? We uh, transfer the metal for the metal endings, 
okay, also we manufacture the yarn, okay, then there are different parts, a part of the textile, but on the textile side of our future is to manufacture ecological products, recycled, recyclable, biodegradable, natural materials, as for example, the paper, and also to make ecological endings. Our challenge is to manufacture ecological endings from metal and plastic to more ecological ones, as for example, paper. Then thank you very much to listen to my presentation and Maria Joao, I'm at your disposition, uh, disposition to answer all the questions that you could have. Jaime, thank you so much for your presentation. I, I think we will do both uh, textile presentations and both uh, technology production presentations and then we will have a slot for Q&A. So I uh, again invite all participants to put their questions on the chat, uh, either to all people or internally for us. Um, but thank you so much, Jaime. And the, the, the Q&A, it will be, if you don't mind, on the end. So uh, now we will have uh, Miguel Machado from ERT Group. Uh, Miguel Machado is the IT and Ecom uh, 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 Director uh, on ERT. Uh, Miguel, uh, let me just give you... Sorry, presenter role. Ah, someone gave you. Thank you, someone. So, Miguel, the floor is yours. Okay. Hello. Uh, good morning, all. Can you? Uh, uh, are you uh, hearing me? Okay. We can hear you. Okay. We can see the PowerPoint, but if you can put it in uh, yes. presentation, it uh, it's still yes. Okay, I will change also. Now it's perfect. Thank you, Miguel. Okay. Uh, so, um, let me just back again. So, uh, good morning all again. Uh, my name is Miguel Machado. Um, I am uh, a CTO um, uh, of the ERT uh, group. Uh, and uh, I will talk today uh, a little bit about uh, the company and the, 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 the robotization part that we have already in, in place uh, and the, the, some of the challenges that uh, we, we have uh, nowadays. So, um, uh, uh, ERT is a, a Portuguese company uh, uh, and its car business are uh, uh, interior components for, for the automotive uh, industry. Uh, we also have uh, uh, um, some products for the regular industry, but the, the, the core business, uh, it's, it's uh, uh, automotive. Um, ERT works as a, a tier two uh, supplier. Uh, uh, and uh, the tier two supplier is the, the second level of the, of the automotive supply chain. So we, we, we supply uh, to the tier one and uh, then the tier one provides directly to the OEM that uh, uh, that's what we call the car manufacturer, uh, the car manufacturer. Uh, ERT is located in the, art, uh, in the heart of the automotive industry cluster at San Juan de Madeira. Um, some of the the, the, the products uh, that uh, we produce uh, are textile parts uh, that can be of several materials like uh, leather, uh, PVC, uh, uh, fabric, uh, foam uh, uh, or carpet and uh, we can apply uh, on, on the different parts of the vehicle like the, the, the door, door armrest, the central armrest, central consoles, seats, uh, columns. So every part of the car that we know that has like a soft touch, uh, uh, this uh, type of material, uh, we can produce parts for 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 these uh, components for for these areas. Uh, ERT uh, group uh, footprint on the world is already uh, being uh, 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 developed uh, as a as a consequence of uh, the strategy uh, of the group strategy of being closer. Uh, to the to the to the automotive clusters. So 
we are present uh, not only here in Portugal on, on the Portuguese automotive cluster, but we also have plants in Morocco and in the uh, Czech Republic. Uh, and we also uh, are planning uh, already to, to, to implement uh, production facilities in Mexico and in China that is near uh, uh, the, the, the tier one uh, suppliers and the, the, the OEM uh, OEM uh, uh, plants. Um, we also have some uh, commercial uh, commercial uh, offices in uh, in other parts of the Europe, like Spain, Poland, uh, or Romania. Uh, here we can see some of our uh, direct customers, the tier one uh, customers that are uh, worldwide uh, worldwide. Uh, uh, known uh, uh, tier one providers, uh, and uh, here are some of the brands, the OEMs that we produce for. Regarding the technologies, and uh, uh, during the the, the, the time um, from from the beginning of ERT, uh, the, the the processes were were being developed and nowadays we already count with a, a lot of machinery and uh, with PLCs to, to assist us on our on, on our processes but basically uh, uh, we have uh, four 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 processes let us say one first process that is a roll lamination where we uh, fuse two of the raw materials together then uh, uh, a cutting stage where we uh, cut uh, the, the fabric that is uh, made on the first stage, then a sewing stage where we can uh, 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 sew like in a technical or decorative uh, way the, the, the parts that are cut before, and then another part that is a covering or wrapping part where we apply those uh, uh, parts uh, in a plastic uh, part, for instance for the armrests where we uh, apply the the, the 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 fabric that is made before on this plastic part. As each of these processes uh, produce uh, produce a, a final product that can be sold in the individually. Some of the parts go through all, but some of them we can sell separately on on each uh, of the processes. Um, On these processes, we use uh, uh, several technologies, and uh, for for the lamination part, we use uh, flame bond and hot melt lamination. Uh, then, on on the cutting uh, part, we already use uh, CNC cutting or laser cutting or and laser cutting. Um, on the sewing, we also have CNC sewing or uh, manual sewing, and uh, on the covering. Uh, wrapping part, uh, we uh, use press uh, covering or uh, uh, foam in place reaction in mold application. Um, today, and uh, uh, that's where we use the the, the 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 a set of robots. We will focus a little bit on the on the foam in place uh, process uh, where we uh, produce. Uh, um, a little bit, uh, some poly, polyurethane parts uh, uh, where we use, uh, where we produce these poly, polyurethane parts on, on on these robots. We will see here uh, a little bit of uh, on this video uh, some of our technologies in action uh, and. Uh, uh, I will just let finish the, the video and we, we will then go to the um, to the part where we I will explain a little bit more the, the, the this uh, challenge that was the, the, the robotization part of this process. Okay, so regarding the the this uh, foam in place reaction in in mold uh, process, uh, we uh, we uh, what, what happens here basically is a, a reaction between two agents uh, that is polyol and isocyanate. 
uh, and when these products are mixed uh, uh, we produce this polyurethane that has certain properties and certain characteristics that are uh, um, quite uh, uh, flexible in terms of uh, application. So uh, uh, we uh, uh, have uh, invested in uh, in, uh, in the, the set of robots because the, the the conditions to mix the the, the these two products together are quite specific and uh, uh, need to be uh, quite controlled. So in in this situation, uh, this was the best solution that that we were able to to. Um, to, to encounter. Uh, just explaining a little bit more about the, what happens in this uh, uh, process uh, the, the, where we use the, the, the polyurethane. Uh, we have uh, uh, to mix or we have these two products individually. Uh, uh, we can have different textures, different uh, densities and, stif and stiffness uh, uh, depending on, on the quantities the, uh, of the two raw materials that we that we mix together uh, and to achieve good results and but in producing scale uh, uh, the robots were a, a big help for for us and uh, and help us to 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 assure consistency uh, to assure uh, uh, that that the correct quantities are applied and this allowed us uh, uh, a quicker uh, production and uh, uh, high quality of of the final product So when did this uh, uh, challenge begin? Uh, and uh, exactly how do you do and exactly what is the product that, that we do? Uh, this began with a challenge uh, a few years ago where uh, uh, there where was a need to produce a, a door armrest, the armrest, uh, like well, as we see here in, in the picture and uh, uh, ERT produced already the fabric that uh, was wrapped uh, at the end in this in this uh, part uh, but uh, uh, there was the, this part was made uh, elsewhere so the, 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 the at, at, at the moment there was a, a challenge about the, or by um, the one of our one of our uh, uh, customers, the the tier one provider, uh, uh, they challenge us to okay, and, uh, and not if you not only provided us the the the, the fabric for the armrest, but if you uh, will uh, provide us all also with uh, this um, polyurethane part uh, already attached to the to the piece uh, uh, to the to the plastic part. And okay, we, we have analyzed uh, everything and we have concluded that this could be not only a good, a good uh, opportunity for, for uh, this project, but also a good opportunity for, for future uh, developments. And uh, we realized that the automotive industry began uh, using this, uh, this product uh, uh, largely and it was really a, a good idea for us to, to, to study and to invest. So, uh, uh, regarding this, what what uh, what ERT has decided to do? So ERT decided to invest in uh, in a, a, a robot arm that works with uh, uh, some uh, mold booth, uh, and the robot arm basically uh, uh, do the mix uh, on a mixing head that is uh, placed uh, at the end of the arm, and uh, in, injects the, the product on the on the um, on the on the mold, and then the mold closes, and the uh, uh, the polyurethane uh, is uh, adheres to to the plastic uh, to the plastic part. Here we can see a little bit of example. Uh, the part is heated, uh, then is placed on the upper part of the mold. Uh, and then uh, uh, there is the robot injects directly the the the, the polyurethane, and then the mold clothes, uh, closes, and the 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 part is um, uh, the polyurethane uh, adheres to the plastic part. <clears throat> so at that moment, when the the um, the, the the challenge was made uh, ERT invested first in a, in a one robot head this is a, a 
uh, a, a little bit of a blueprint of what we have now. Uh, this is a closed area, completely closed area, and uh, uh, these are the, the four mobiles that uh, work uh, and the robot arm in the middle. So what happens is that the, the robot arm goes through mode to mode uh, in a, in a sequence uh, and injects uh, uh, in sequence all the all the um, the, the polyurethane in, in the molds uh, and this is the, was the first stage for mold booths in one uh, and one uh, robot arm uh, but uh, quickly we realized that this was uh, really um, uh, uh, um, an opportunity and uh, as new projects began we have uh, doubled the capacity and right now and on the moment we have this blueprint where we have two robot arms with this uh, um, eight uh, um, eight uh, mold booths uh, at the moment and uh, with only this uh, this uh, this uh, layout uh, we are able to produce uh, approximately uh, 4500 pieces by day that is roughly uh, 1200 cars uh, per day this depends on the projects that that uh, we 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 have because uh, uh, some of them produces uh, uh, four pieces is one car, some of them two pieces is one car, so it's not uh, direct, but uh, nevertheless, uh, 1,200 uh, 1, cars by day, it's already uh, massive and, and impressive uh, for, for, for only these uh, this, uh, two robot arms. And as uh, uh, the, the, the technology and application continues to 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 uh, to increase, and uh, the, the several applications are developing, uh, we already are plan to, planning to improve uh, our capacity and uh, uh, change a little bit our layout and uh, uh, invest in another in another uh, uh, robot arm with four more uh, mold booths. Uh, with this layout, uh, we will be able to, to go to uh, roughly 7,000 pieces by day. That will be more or less 1,750 cars uh, by day. And this is just uh, uh, one area, one sing single area, one, one, one uh, uh, a specific uh, uh, process that we are that we are talking here uh, we already have uh, uh, studies and uh, and developments to other areas to see what we can do um, why why because as i said uh, uh, every day we are uh, seeing that uh, uh, polyurethane is being used uh, widely not only in the in the automotive industry uh, uh, on several several parts of the car because of its uh, properties is lightweight uh, it's quite uh, um uh, uh, can have different consistencies different shapes so it's really really uh, 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 the one future um uh, one future uh, um component let us say that uh, that uh, it's going to be used widely uh, but not only in the in the automotive industry we have also already uh, quite um, a large set of uh, utilities for for polyurethane in footwear sports uh, transportation furniture uh, so it's it's very important that we have uh, already a lot of know-how in this area and uh, uh, we can see a, a change in the, in the future uh, uh, on the use of this uh, this technology and uh, uh, it's strategic for us to to, to continue to invest uh, in this type of uh, of, um, of uh, material and robotization uh, uh, not only uh, this uh, robotization is being a, a challenge and a, a solution for some problems but we are also facing uh, some changes internally and for this uh, ERT is implementing or has uh, begun a project that we call ERT uh, I 5.0 5.0 that is covering not only the, the this uh, production part but also uh, 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 some uh, concepts regarding industry 4.0 and IoT uh, where we are uh, uh, 
working and where we will uh, uh, implement some artificial vision uh, on the review process that will allow us to, to um, improve our uh, customer satisfaction and reducing the, 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 the flaws, let us say the flaw products that can go to, to the customer. We are uh, doing a cloud-based infrastructure, so we are going to migrate everything that we have internally to, to cloud-based. This will also um, this will also uh, 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 will help more or less when on reducing our our uh, ecological footprint. Uh, on this also on on, on this subject, we will uh, uh, improve our real data acquisition from shop floor because uh, we will also in, uh, apply. Uh, some PLCs on our uh, shop floor machines to, to, to recover some data. Uh, with this, we will be able to produce real-time shop floor KPIs. Uh, we will also invest in RFID tagging from our products to, to be able to more easily uh, take control of, of uh, the stock movements inside the plants. We, we, we are also investing in document management systems to, to improve uh, 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 document traceability, document security, uh, versioning control, and this is very important for our uh, engineering. Uh, uh, and as you might know, uh, automotive industry is uh, but, um, quite severe and uh, uh, with with security. So we, it's important for us to uh, every day take care of our, about this uh, security and make sure that uh, uh, everything is uh, is quite is traceable and. Uh, with the, the right versions controlled. Um, we are also investing in paper dematerialization on all areas, uh, financial area, uh, 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 human resources, uh, health and security, engineering, production. Uh, we will also... Uh, um, I'm sorry, Miguel. Uh, yes. One more minute, please. We are yeah, going a little late. Yeah, I'm this sorry is really... for interrupting you. Sorry, sorry. No, no, not a problem. I'm really, I'm really finishing. Uh, so uh, uh, we will implement here on the paper dematerialization part also electronic signatures, uh, uh, real-time KPIs and dashboards for business control, and we are also implementing ISO 27001 uh, for security norms for business security and and continuity. So all all of this uh, is uh, uh, is ongoing and will. Uh, uh, allow to to sustain uh, everything that we are doing on the production level so we not only have uh, uh, and begin to have a lot of automatization and robotization in our production but if we don't do this uh, type of uh, 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 changes also in the organization it will be not sustainable so uh, with this we believe that uh, we will uh, uh, achieve uh, more quickly sustainability and that will allow us to increase productivity and increase uh, quality uh, on our products and what in what we deliver to our customer. Uh, so uh, uh, this will this is uh, also the the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you so much. Uh, I think we will go straight forward to our next presentation. At the end, uh, we will do uh, a Q&A, uh, but uh, let's now follow to uh, Raquel Caldeira from Introsis. She will be presenting the new i4.0 I, I products, the Introsis use cases. Uh, Raquel, you already have the, the floor, you, you are already a presenter, uh, if you can share your screen. Yes. Yeah, oh, good, yes. Morning. Uh, good morning, Thank it's you. perfect. Raquel. Claymax uh, project for the invitation. Um, so I'm, I'm the innovation manager of Introsys and in this meeting are also Manu Flores, our managing director, and uh, José Gonçalves, the uh, innovation project management. So, Introsys is... Uh, I'm sorry. Yes, okay, I think it's now ready. Introsys is... Uh, a control system company, a Portuguese control system company, 
that uh, work mainly for automotive uh, uh, industry and uh, our uh, main clients are the Volkswagen Group, Ford Group, uh, BMW and, and Daimler. As the, the, um, the previous company, we are also a second year supplier because we work mainly in the body shop area. We are, um, the scope of our projects um, are projects and electrical development, um, electrical installation, uh, virtual commissioning and PLC programming, uh, offline and online um, robot programming, mechanical design, electrical manufacturing, and also project management. And our main, uh, the first uh, um, suppliers are, of course, the, the big mechanical company of um, Europe, uh, mainly in Central Europe, uh, German companies, and we work uh, for, for with these companies in the in the project. We are located in Portugal, near uh, um, near Palmela, Nakinda do Anjo, but we have also um, two uh, um, companies in Mexico and China, and we. As we can see here, we work all over the world where our uh, customers have plans. Now we are more than uh, 150 employees and uh, most of them are electrical engineers. In our R&D department or innovation department, uh, we have work mainly in three areas, vision systems, mobile robotics, and also new technologies, new control systems technologies, uh, mainly to introduce more uh, agility and flexibility in the, in the production lines. And here you can see several products, uh, first related with vision systems. Automotive manufacturers have security, quality and design as their top priority factors. Current demands for efficiency and style require vehicles to be more complex in terms of materials and assembly techniques. Some of those materials require complex bonding techniques. Consequently, the use of industrial adhesives is gaining more prominence as they guarantee robustness, comfort, weather tightness and safety when welding is insufficient or not possible. However, this trend implies suitable quality control techniques to ensure compliance of joint parts. As external factors from equipment, environment or process may influence the integrity of the adhesive fluid and induce significant flaws, this task is far from trivial and, if defects are not detected and corrected beforehand, several problems may occur during subsequent assembly procedures, leading to low quality products and significant waste production. Introsys has developed an integrated solution for this challenge with the CQ project called iSent. The iSent system uses innovative algorithms to perform automated vision inspection and correction of fluid application to every produced part during and after the dispensing. This enables a reduction of waste and contributes to a more sustainable production. In the scope of the project, Introsys built an industrial cell at Castello Branco to perform validation and testing of the developed inspection systems. The cell provides a controlled industrial environment for adjustment and validation, as well as performing further optimizations and customizations on the solutions. At the dispensing station, a new glue bead is placed on the part, while the attached inspection ring assesses its conformity simultaneously. ISENT inspection system performs detailed evaluation and quantification of all bead defects, whether in positioning, thickness or continuity. Continuity defects or gaps are the ones that most frequently occur at glue dispensing processes. ISENT correction system can eliminate them by addressing these gaps in an optimal way, tackling them in an order that implies the shortest possible trajectory, thus saving cycle time and energy. The data from all performed inspections is stored, not only to retrieve historical and statistical models, but also to access and evaluate new inspection technologies, including machine learning and artificial intelligence. 
This demonstrator will remain available for visiting to interest its partners, continuing to foster research and technological innovation, and assuring quality assurance at the service of the manufacturing industry. This system is also installed in the uh, Volkswagen plant in Alto Europa, and the, there we have installed uh, new vision systems, not only related for quality inspection, but also for pick and place process. In this case, the wheels in the in the in the in the in this plant. This this uh, this is the first phase of the project where we put a, a collaborative robot, a fun collaborative robot, but uh, with the, the uh, with the new cycle time um, cycle time uh, needs, we have to improve the system with a new gripper and also a, 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 with a different uh, robot. And this is already um, working there. Of course, we work not only with the, uh, RGB cameras, but also with hyperspectral cameras, that is a new technology uh, with um, a great potentiality for different users. In this case, to check the color um, of the, the cars, uh, we do color inspection in this case, and this project was with PSC in, in Vigo. Um, but we are using that for for agro food industry. In this case, in the fire feed um, product or project with the M company, where we have two quality uh, stations, one of uh, with the RGB cameras to to um, identify um, defects in the in the sealing process and the other one to check the salt quantity and the fat quantity of the end. In the end of the line, uh, this is some pictures of the results of the projects, and in the end of the line, we have also a, um, a robot where we do the pick and place of the okay or not okay uh, products. In the, in the scope of the new control systems technology and also with the, the including the mobile robotic field uh, we have also a project named open was it was a horizon 2020 project that, that uh, introduces was the coordinator and um, where we developed several systems one of them the the, the AD, agb of the project and also the service bus that is the middleware of the communication of the data from the devices to the, um, the cloud system. Industrial manufacturing is rapidly moving from mass productive systems to mass customization as customers increasingly ask for more products that meet their personal taste. This new paradigm is very challenging for traditional models that need to make frequent changes on the assembly line to produce all possible product variations. This situation can have a negative effect on change over time, which can be devastating for the competitiveness of the company. The adoption of plug-in produce automation concept enables faster product introduction by reducing the effort needed to readjust and reconfigure the equipment and devices. Intrasys provides an industry-ready demonstrator to test and verify the OpenMOS concept applied to the automotive sector up to TRL7. The OpenMOS web-based HMI provides access to a broad range of new functionalities. The HMI allows the deployment of new product definitions into the system following the automation ML standard. The operator can request orders for different product types with different quantities and priorities enabling frequent changeovers. The 
manufacturing service bus manages the execution and orchestration of products and recipes between the existing devices depending on their availability. The manufacturing service bus also supports rerouting of product instances between skill similar stations. All the recipe execution data and KPIs are sent and stored in the cloud, supporting historical data and order management. OpenMOS technology seamlessly integrates product assembly processes with logistics in real time. This new wave of smart automated guided vehicles will shorten response time as well as flow times within the OpenMOS production systems. OpenMOS technology also integrates with other open source initiatives such as the robotic operating system, ROS. Okay, and that's it. Some of it of, of robotics examples in in uh, intros and uh, our customer ones also. Uh, thank you, Raquel, for a very uh, interesting presentation and very nice uh, examples. Uh, I think uh, uh, we will all have some questions, but I think we it's better if now we pass on to ECOP to Mr. Christoph Scheib. He is the Senior Business Development and Partnership Manager. He will talk about us by, uh, regarding cobotics and the textile industry, how to improve European textile production to eliminate low added value logistics uh, thanks to Cobotics. Uh, I will give him the, the floor. Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Sh Christoph Scheid. Yeah. Uh, Good morning to all. Ah, uh, yes, I'm sorry. I was lo looking under uh, C, okay. and you are uh, under E, so I was not yeah. able to find you. <laughs> Please, you are now the presenter. Uh, we can hear you, but we cannot see neither your screen, neither your camera. Okay. My screen now? Yes, yes, your screen, we can now see it. Uh, but yes, in, perfect. Thank Let's you. Okay, thank the floor you. is yours. Um, good morning to all. My name is uh, Christoph Shedd from Ecobot Company. Um, I'm in charge of developing new markets on partnerships for Ecobot. Uh, in other words, I have to identify end user needs in order to build and deploy technological and financial solutions in response to the challenges of the industry of the future. Um, so, thanks to my presentation, I will try to answer to these questions uh, how to improve European textile production thanks to transferable cobotics use cases from logistics or manufacturing industry to the textile industry. So, first, I will give you a short presentation of our uh, company, eCobot, our different kind of cobots and services, and with a special focus on our smart mobile robot for logistic tasks. Uh, it is called USKey. Um, in, a, in a second time, uh, I will show you many use case applications or uh, example in manufacturing industry that we can transfer to textile industry. Um, so, um, first about Ecobot, we are a manufacturer and an integrator um, of robotic solutions in order to help people for logistic tasks. Um, we are based in Nantes in France and created in 2016. But today we are already 45 engineers, uh, physical doctors and technicians. And uh, we have five innovation programs and we utilize the turnover around three million euros. Um, uh, as you can see below, uh, we have three main markets. Um, first, industry and logistics. Um, next, retail and uh, a new market that is uh, healthcare. Um, our customers, uh, 
uh, Manitou, Idea Logistics, uh, Jeffco, Hutchinson, Stelia, uh, Safran, but also uh, Leclerc, uh, SuperU, uh, or Airbus. Um, I can precise you that already we have already we already have instead one of the use case solutions uh, for Stelia company uh, near Porto uh, in uh, Portugal. Next, um, uh, regarding to our organization, we have two business units. On the left side uh, here, uh, you can see Ecobot Technology, which is the manufacturer unit. Uh, the role of this team is to work from innovation to the industrial production of our cobots and associated services. Um, just below, uh, you have also Ecobot Solutions, which is the OEM integrator unit. This team provides consulting, design, and integration of Chunky projects uh, in mobile cobots on collaborative robot arm. Robot arm. I notice you that Ecobot is the only player um, in the cobotic market that uh, masters the entire industrial value chain from design to the integration of Chunky projects of the end customer. If you look uh, at the right of this page, um, the, um, you can see our four ranges of our own products and other collaborative apps that we can install. Um, if you look on uh, here, we have uh, companion of companions of performance uh, about mobility, the use key range uh, that we'll focus next on the presentation, and the use key range for handling. Uh, of handling. Um, the, the use key is, a, is a, a smart mobile uh, cobot in order to move stuff good uh, in logistic tasks. The key is uh, to help you to handle and move parts up to 50 kilos uh, with only one hand. This. Um, we can also install robotic arms like uh, Yaskawa, Kuka, Fanuc, or Universal Robots. Um, just uh, here we have the job experience um, with uh, our Alter Cobot range uh, of standard accessories made for Yuski products in order to fit to our customer needs and job. We'll uh, understand uh, in the next slide how it works. And finally, we have a new range of products uh, here. Uh, it's the, the Yuski UV, uh, which is, was uh, designed during the first confinement in 2020. And uh, it's a disinfection solution in response to the COVID-19 and other viruses and bacteria. Uh, here you can see audit consulting, integration of mobile robots, integration of collaborative robot arms, or uh, a mix with collaborative mobile robots arms um, up to Yuski. Next, we'll focus on your scheme. Um, so uh, it's almost the same technology seen before in the IDEPA success story of the, or, or um, uh, just before in the intro this presentation. Um, it's, it's a kind of AGV, uh, but with more intelligence, uh, embedded intelligence, uh, embedded intelligence. Um, we designed Yuski like a standard, standard smart robot cobot. Uh, that can offer several possibilities by adding job accessories, like you, you can see here. Um, next in the presentation, we will see many examples. Uh, we, we have uh, three modes uh, to use Yuski. Uh, the follower mode, uh, uh, Yuski follows you wherever you go. And the autonomous mode, uh, thanks to its commissioning and embedded sensor, Yuski knows where it is, the recorded map, and it can move autonomously wherever it wants. In specific case, you can use it in remote control mode too. Um, so for example, uh, as you see here, um, you can use it uh, in a follower mode for pinging tasks. And when you finish, you can tell it to deliver parts to the production area. Um, about the main characteristic of Yuski, uh, it can carry up. Oh, sorry, okay. just a problem here. Uh, uh, it can carry up to 2,050 kilos payload max, max, and tows up to one ton. It has 16 hours of battery life and a maximum speed of um, about uh, seven kilometers per hour. And 
uh, it has three, uh, 360 degrees of state safety zone in order to protect goods and people by stopping or avoiding collision. Manifestation about how it works. Um, Yuski moves using cards recorded on site during the commissioning. Uh, EU, e, it uses the embedded sensors to compare the real environment to its pre-recorded map and determine the best route. You can see here a, a sample of a pre-recorded map and here uh, um, a use case. Uh, about the virtual zone, safety zones, uh, it can uh, avoid obstacles uh, safety and uh, here it can uh, go on, here it, it will uh, slower, go slower and then it stop uh, when it in, in, is in, uh, in the safety, uh, the red safety zones. You can create new missions yourself. When we have uh, recorded on site, we have to, you can create new missions yourself. And if the layout of the site changes, you, it can automatically update its map. Now, um, um, We'll uh, speak about the context and challenges about textile industry, uh, uh, our own point of view. Uh, the majority of the mass textile market industry comes from China and India. They, they have large workforce, low costs, lower trade barriers, and availability in stock at competitive advantages. While this textile industry specializing in the development of luxury items or technical and intelligent textiles comes from the European Union. But we've got a smaller workforce, more expenses, but experts, uh, a stock availability of raw material of reduced quality, uh, as well ecological standards make it possible to stand out. The context of COVID-19 has exacerbated the problems of the globalization of the textile industry. Import stopped, long transport time, storage costs. I think that the trends, uh, it's to, to to find solution to the answer uh, of these three questions. How to reduce your labor costs, how to save production time, and how to improve your reliability of, del of delivery date. I think, uh, I strongly believe that the skills of the real European workforce specializing in luxury articles and technical and intelligent taxes are your priority, their priority. Use key offers you the opportunity to save time in order to focus on manufacturing by eliminating uh, logistic uh, daily tasks. Here we can see an overview of all of transferable robotics use cases for the textile industry. Um, we have um, use key cleanup, uh, use key picking, conveyor, shuttle supply, delivery, um, lots of low added value logistics and gas can be automated by Yuski. Um, so uh, I will uh, show you many customer projects on the uh, use case application. I think uh, it's uh, more effective than the uh, long speech. So here uh, we can see um, a, a picking application using the follower mode. You can use Yuski for carrying goods without push or pull your heavy, uh, heavy cart. Just uh, uh, I will put in, uh, in the presentation some sample of a video of uh, our videos you can uh, uh, find on our YouTube EcoBot channel. So here you have just to uh, to put run Ruski in a follower mode. Uh, it follows uh, you wherever you go, and you have just to focus on the list of products to, re to recover. You can stop it and restart uh, just after the the, the ending. Uh, Ending. Here um, we can see a picking application using the follower mode um, with uh, Manitou project. Um, Manitou is a manufacturer on link equipment, if you don't know. And uh, you can use a uh, use key for carrying goods without push. Um, so, um, so we, we use the accessory use key easy index uh, to pick uh, production kit. Uh, with the follower model in the in this uh, video. Uh, sorry. Uh, alors, also, uh, here you have the next step of the Manitou project. Here, when the the goods are on the easy index accessory, 
use key can uh, use its, its autonomous mode to, uh, to automatically uh, it automatically the, the cart uh, and uh, order uh, in order to transport goods to the production line. So the the people can uh, stay at its workstation uh, with uh, yeah, to stay with uh, its workstation. Yeah, it's another uh, another accessory for the Vibra, Vibra Acoustic project. Uh, it's an automotive supplier. We have the another accessory uh, called Yuski Grabber. Um, and it can itch automatically the carts and go to the production workstation. Um, also, with the same use key grabber, we can see the, the total performance up to one ton. Here, um, you, you see it can automatically auto, uh, transfer doors or windows for house, uh, houses inside the warehouse. And uh, we have uh, 983 kilos uh, exactly on the, the cards here. And it's the same accessory, use key grabber, with magnetic. Uh, Magnetic to grab it. Um, here you see another accessory, use key conveyor. It can autonomously pick, transport, and deliver goods or plastic uh, case. I'm sorry for the text of the video, it's uh, in French. Um, another uh, use case, um, it's use key cleanup. Uh, it's a solution to uh, manage automatic evacuation of waste dis uh, disposal uh, in, in hidden time. Um, it's, it's not uh, nice to, uh, to, to manage uh, waste uh, disposal, so uh, you can use use key uh, to, to make it and uh, focus on your work on your workstation. Another example of use, use key cleanup. Um, here you can use use key in order to manage waste disposal in the time too. Um, it's uh, a customer project which use use key uh, for the evacuation of the match training chips uh, of aluminium. You can see in the uh, we don't we can see but uh, in the in this cart uh, we have uh, match training chips. Um, finally, I know that it's not a, a commercial presentation, but I think it's very important to notice that we launched a new economic model. Uh, we know that customers don't have expandable budget in order to buy Cobotics solutions. So we are the only, uh, today we are the only, only, only manufacturer which can deliver Cobot, which uh, pay as you go model from five euros per hour. Um, so um, it's, uh, it's a, a new way to, to access to the Cobotics solutions. Um, thank you for your attention. Um, if you want to see more videos or information, you can find it on the, our website or on the YouTube Ecobot channel. Um, and uh, feel free to use the chat or to, to contact me by email after the meeting. Uh, we'll take, take much time to speak about uh, your use case or cobaltic solutions. Thank you. Thank you, Christophe, for a very interesting presentation and from, very, from numerous uh, cases and uh, examples you gave us. Uh, we are a little over time, but uh, I think uh, for those who don't have to leave for B2B meetings on B2Match, uh, we, I have here some, I have here three questions that uh, were placed uh, uh, in the chat internally to me. Uh, so uh, maybe if uh, I can have um, 
uh, Jaime Cabré, Miguel Machado, Raquel Caldeira and uh, Christophe Schied, if you can open uh, your uh, uh, cameras uh, and then I will, uh, for LIASA and ERT, well, I have one question that is directed to uh, both of you, and so maybe I will start with Jaime, because I'm already seeing him here. Which was the most complex part on the uptake of robotization from the well, other point of view? <laughs> yes, uh, well, in fact, uh, now what we are working is with automats, okay? We don't have the robots. Uh, we are analyzing the, um, in this case, it's our cobots, okay? Because also will be people near them, we are speaking about more cobots than robots. And, uh, well, the most difficult um, is to understand, okay, uh, how the cobots have to work together with an injection machine, okay? Then uh, this is the most uh, more technical side and the most difficult part of this uh, robotization that we are thinking about. Okay, so Miguel, the question is the same uh, for you. The, the, comp the most complex part in this integration uh, from your user perspective. I'm not sure if you are listening to me, uh, Miguel Machado. We cannot. Ah, okay, uh, sorry. Ah. Yeah. Uh, hello. Yes, I, I was not. Uh, uh, there was a, a gap here. Uh, I didn't Sorry. understand. So, uh, don't you mind uh, repeat no, of the, course. The, the question? No, of course not. Uh, we have a question here that is which uh, was or is the most complex part on the uptake of robotization on your company? Um, so, the, 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 the most complex uh, part is. Uh, um, the, the, the challenges that we face that uh, 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 regarding the, the fabric uh, uh, sensibility. Uh, in this case, uh, we use just uh, uh, this um, on this process. We just inject the, the, the polyurethane on the part, uh, and then the part is is going to be um, to be covered. So uh, even that uh, uh, some some. Uh, mark uh, uh, might be there or some some uh, uh, smaller defect is there uh, it's not a big problem but when we talk about the the, the fabric the PVC the leather that is going to be uh, um, uh, uh, visible to the customer uh, uh, it's quite a, a challenge to make uh, a, a, an automatic process, a robot, uh, what kind of machinery handling it, uh, not leaving any type of mark. So when we uh, face a new challenge in the other areas, this is our uh, our uh, higher concern. Okay, not to disturb, not to uh, have any uh, markings whatsoever on on our uh, on our final product. Yes, yes, I, I think uh, from 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 all this session, uh, I think that is the big challenge in the, the textile yeah. is to yeah. uh, the, the the very sensitive material that we are handling. Yeah. So now for interosis, uh, uh, we have that uh, you. you shown some examples uh, that we assume that can be adapted to textile processes, uh, naming the part of the defects uh, detection, the color screening, and you just uh, elaborate a little more uh, for our textile audience. <laughs> yes, of course. In in um, in uh, the hyperfetal cameras for for color inspection, yes, could be used for uh, for several industries. Uh, we have used for for car uh, color inspection, but can be used for for different ones. Um, the most important thing uh, that we have to have from our clients um, the 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 perfect 
color and after that we match the color that we have to inspect or the the, the tissue that we have to inspect with the the masters of um, of uh, of the the color that we we want to to verify um it's not a, a, a very difficult pr procedure um it's expensive because these sensors are very new and uh, and because of that um uh, they they uh, they are more expensive than uh, uh, RGB camera, but it's not so difficult. We have to have um, a lot of samples, of course, but with uh, one week or two in the in our um, client factory, it's not difficult to 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 have uh, a good uh, um, inspections system to to verify um to verify the the, the color um, so we the only issue I, we have to good good masters um to compare the 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 the, the samples to inspect with these masters um for the other systems of of course we have uh, there is a lot of customization in these uh, procedures. We have our um, software, the, the Eisen to run is a, a software related with the uh, with, um, inspection system. But in, in each project, um, and because the needs of uh, each client and the, each industry sector, we have to have um, a huge customization process and um, one of the main challenge sometimes are uh, the cycle time uh, requirements um, because in, in in i can give you the example of the the, the food agri food industry the cycle time is very 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 short um, and we have the same in the automotive industry but um, but I think uh, uh, there is uh, uh, very easy to to implement this type of system in in the textile industry. Yeah, great. Uh, then just one final uh, question for Mr. Chai. Uh, so uh, if a textile company is uh, uh, at this moment, uh, still don't have any uh, uh, any robot doing their internal uh, logistics. Um, do, do you have a, an estimation of uh, uh, cost reduction and increased productivity that they could have? Just a, a rough number uh, to uh, inspire uh, companies to go this way. Uh, yeah, uh, I understand. Uh, it's um, uh, it's a big question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. It, it's just an average. You have, have one hour to transfer. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry no um, it's it's very complicated to, uh, to speak about the return and investment and to uh, to, to um, uh, find uh, so. Um, economy um, uh, saving, uh, but for example, uh, we can save about uh, twenty or thirty, thirty to forty percent of time uh, by using uh, commodities, uh, mobile commodities uh, in the logistics uh, tasks uh, in the in the industry. Um, we just uh, the results uh, of uh, our integration uh, in, uh, for, in the, the different uh, um, customer projects we have, and um, we, we we can we can um, yeah thirty percent it's okay. Yeah. No. Okay. It's it's an interesting number to yeah. save up to forty percent in time. Even people that are allocated to that can be uh, transferred to some more added time, value uh, missions. Yeah. So just time for logistics types. Um, 
And that depends if you have a one, two, three shifts uh, in the industry. Uh, uh, by, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, thank you, thank you all uh, for the speakers for this day. Thank you to all participants in uh, this uh, in this event. I remind you that from now until the 14th Central European time, the B2B platform are open. All the, the companies that were involved here today are presented there. So uh, if uh, you, you want to hear more about their uh, products, you can schedule meetings with them still today or for the next two days. The, their contacts are there. Please uh, uh, use the B2Match platform. We think it's a, a very interesting tool for everyone. You have 170 people more or less there that can uh, that uh, uh, with a click, you can reach for a quick meeting and that maybe, who knows, some uh, new business can be, uh, can start from there. So thank you again. Uh, uh, hope to see you one week from now for the uh, potential of uh, virtual reality in the textiles uh, sector. Thank you all. Have a nice day. See you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.